Welcome back everyone to another episode of Rick's Gadgets. Amy reached out again and asked me if I would do a review on the Cruiser Pan Tilt Camera. And this kind of complements the bullet cam that I've got uh, from IMU. And this is the Pan Tilt version. And as you can see, it comes with all the basic hardware that you would get with any typical camera. Um, it has a wired connection uh, for the power and you can also hook up Cat5 if you don't want to run it wireless. And it comes with, of course, two-way communication on it. And night vision, it has a um, spotlights on it. Uh, the, the antennas can be rotated because you can mount it uh, upside down or right side up, depending on how you want to do it. Here, I'm just going to use it without the base that it comes with and just have it sitting I'm not going to do a permanent mount yet until I finish testing it. Uh, it also gives you the waterproofing for your Cat5 since it's outdoor rated and the power cord. And that's everything that really comes with the uh, the kit and uh, the camera. So to start off with, um, you got the basic camera here. Uh, you do have internal storage and the reset button here. If you do want to put a SD card in, because it doesn't have any cloud storage unless you pay for the service. So if you want to do any recording features, you do have to have the SD card in there. So now to go over to the setup. Um, this setup was just like the bullet camera. Um, you just go up and do add a camera. But I will warn you, and I did it in the other video, when you go to set it up and you scan the QR code, it's going to try to connect to the camera and then the camera of course will then try to pick up the credentials for your Wi-Fi and it is very important to remember that you need to have you need to be on the 2.4 and not the 5 gigahertz um, because when I went to connect here it it I mean it spells it out you know up here at the top it says no uh, 5G or five gigahertz so what i had to do was um it would not connect to the network uh even though i thought i was on the 2.4 so i just had to go into my router here and go in and you'll have some routers that could be different than your on on your router but on this one i have the option of turning off the five gigahertz so i just flipped that off went back into the imu did a scan <clears throat> and everything added fine um, only took just a couple seconds and once you get in to the uh, to the addition screen here it's going to tell you it was uh, successfully added it will allow you to name it and then it's going to give you the option to get your free storage they give you seven days free but uh, like I said if you don't want to use cloud storage you can opt for the SD card so here it is i've got it set up here with the bullet camera uh, and the uh, pan tilt side by side the aspect ratio um, the field of view everything looked uh, pretty much similar on both of them uh, it does have human detection uh, but i am seeing a lot of uh, i guess false triggers on that but you can see here this was a motion human detection and it picked me up full frame walking from side to side. That was the, the pan tilt. And I'll go over here to the bullet cam. And they behave identical. I mean, they caught me at the same spot and, and followed me through. Um, one of the other features in this is the, the tracking. And let me uh, pull up that and I will show you how the tracking works. So as you can see here, as I'm moving out of the frame, it's tracking me pretty well. Um, and I'll shoot off here around the corner, and once I'm out of the frame, it will go back and reset to the original position. So I waited there for a little bit. I guess I didn't wait enough, but it timed out. I didn't get the timeout on. But here I am trying to walk into the edge, and it didn't move at all. So kind of head back the other way and I've noticed that it will not track me to the left as you can see I completely went off 
and now it decides to move to the right. So it, it's it's not a hundred percent tracking me because obviously it was very delayed and I think it's trying to find me here, but it just couldn't follow me. So I tried it again and this time you'll see I kind of walk in and it picked me up and started to kind of keep me in frame, but then it went off to the right again. <laughs> so it's not 100% reliable on the, the tracking. So that's uh, one of the drawbacks. And, you know, here that it's caught me, I'll go back and forth. And it does keep a pretty good track on me. But again, when I shoot off to the left, it will not follow me any further off of the, past the left side there. And you can kind of watch here as it moves me around, keeps me centered, and then it didn't do anything. So now let's get into some of the night shots. Um, here was this one that I think bugs were setting it off. But let me do some real tests with humans and we can compare. So the first test here that I'm doing, I have the floodlight on, and you can see it starts out in black and white night mode and then it switches over to color and when it goes to the color you can't really see the details as great so I wanted to try it with the floodlight off so I went back out of frame and let everything reset turned off the floodlight and still came on so I did this several times and I could not get the floodlight to turn off so I don't know if that's something to do with software or not but um, it just would not uh, cut off. And I didn't have tracking going either, so I just wanted to kind of get an idea of what it was like. Um, another thing that I want to point out here is in the software, and I'm doing the desktop app here, the, the navigation in here, there's no fast forward or rewind. So if you have a long clip, you have to watch the whole thing. You have to jump around. There's no thumbnails to look at on the screen. So it's kind of hard navigating around in the screen to start off. And one other thing I wanted to point out too, um, to be mindful, with pan tilts, your activity zones, if you go and set it with uh, the pan tilt in a certain location, just remember that that location moves with the pan tilt. Uh, I had it pointing out here to the side and I blocked off the road because people coming by the headlights were triggering a lot of recordings. So I went in and set it and then I found <laughs> I went moved the the pan tilt and once I moved it a little bit uh, I was noticing I was getting the cars again in the shot because I panned it a little bit more the other way. And so when I went back and looked at my activity zone, I had noticed that it would, of course, shifted with it. So if that was one of those careless things that I didn't really think about, but you got to be mindful of, because see here, it's now in a different location. So to kind of wrap up this video, a couple things I want to point out. Uh, one, the motion tracking. Uh, I think there needs to be some work on that, because it's not tracking quite the way it should be. Uh, two, the spotlight feature, turning it on and off, it just stays on all the time. I did have it off at one time. Um, I, maybe I need to reboot the camera and see if it will go into the off state. Um, and the third thing is just the software. Um, like I said, you don't get the thumbnails. You do get them on the app on the phone, but on the PC you don't. Um, and I've yet to figure out a way to download the clips. Uh, a lot of these I was out playing with. And I wanted to bring them in to put them in this video. And the only way I could do it was really bring the SD8 card in, which I didn't want to have to do. So I just captured it off of the screen in my computer here. So it'd be nice to have a way to export your videos so you could share them. And it will go, you know, a lot easier to, to, to send to friends and family. But overall, uh, I'm, you know, like I said, the, the two cameras have been performing well now for, you know, the bullet camera has been over a month and uh, the pan tilt one, I've had it for a couple of weeks now. And again, I'm, you reached out to me to do this video. So 
Uh, I'm being honest about it. You know, they provided the camera, but there's still some flaws in the, the software and the camera itself. So I'm pretty sure some of that could be addressed with firmware upgrades. And I probably should go out and check to see if there's any firmware upgrades. But um, if you have any questions or you have any comments or anything you would like me to check, leave me a comment below and maybe I can do another follow-up video or if I can't answer it, you know, it needs to be something longer, I can do another video on it. But, uh, but I appreciate you stopping by and I look forward to you to coming back and checking out some more content. Thanks. Have a great day.